go to our top ten superheroes. You went first last time, I went first this time. Okay. Honorable mentions. There's we didn't put a lot of women in our list, by the way. You had one. I, I got two on my honorable mentions. Yeah, but I like pimping my boys. I, I would say Catwoman. <coughs> she's a myth, I hear. <coughs> she's a villain. She's a hero. It just it depends on the day of the week. Raven, Storm, the comedian, and Punisher. Are my four honorable mentions. My kids have a bad Number ten. Superman, I have a uh, good respect for superheroes with a good high moral standard. So he's on my top ten. He's number ten for me, and he is a complete. He's a good guy, raised well. If he'd have been raised by anyone else, it could have been a lot worse. He could have been like the, the, the thing that like in all of humanity for the most part. Yeah, like great bubbles. Yeah. Um, Nightwing is number nine for me. I like the, I'm not really a superhero, like superhuman, but just maxing out your potential. Um, Cyclops number eight, I, I liked them in the, in the cartoon when I was a kid. I didn't read the comic book, so that's, that's not in it. That happens. Um, Gambit number seven, one of my favorite. I like the other guy, Tyler, what's his name? Oh shit. You just said it like last podcast. I know. Whatever, whatever your name is. Uh, Gambit, one of my favorite. Oh, um, Taylor Kitsch. Yeah, Taylor Kitsch. Oh, Tyler, Taylor. Um, love him. I'm anxious to see how what's his name is going to be. Um, Chain Tatum. Ooh, that was cool. Uh, number six, Captain America. Another good moral, high moral standard guy, fighting for what he believes is right. Wolverine. I didn't like Wolverine until I saw Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. That's pretty badass. I've always loved Wolverine. I didn't like him when I was a kid. I thought he was just a prick, but Hugh Jackman. And he took a stand. And I, I personally believe that that's the reason that the, that the X-Men movies have gone a better route now. Is because he said, I'm not doing any more He's of him standing behind it saying, I am not putting a bad product out there. Now, we're talking about the guy who starred in The Boy from Oz. So he seriously believed in this gay musical that much that he was willing to be in it. So, I'm sorry, as far as I'm concerned, Hugh Jackman gets the street cred that MPH has, and MPH has got a lot of street cred, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's Wolverine. He's number five. Number four, he turned me on to this, Deadpool. Deadpool's badass. You gotta love Deadpool. He's funny. Deadpool, and for those of you unfamiliar, the most recent thing you could probably pick up is either Deadpool vs. Cable or Agent X. All the same thing. Agent X is a really good storyline, by the way. Number three is Kick Ass, and if I had to throw like a number one or two sidekick, Kick Girl. It's, I'm going off what's fresh in my mind, not all the time. If I had to sit down and think about no, it, think about this. For what you. we've already had this discussion, we're never going to do all time. We'll do up till now, but we're not going to say all time. You say that, I will. I no. Okay, well, example. Time continues. He on. says that as of now, Michael Jordan's the greatest there is. I say he will be the greatest until someone proves him wrong. So as of now. You don't know. Basketball could end tomorrow because some freak accident. Or it could go on for another thousand years. It could. Years. And then you could I'm not going to guess. I will say up until now, Michael Jordan is probably the best player that of all time has now. <laughs> played the game. Has played the game. Not ever will. Has. Done. Okay. Not done, but okay. Well, that was the same way. I got the last Tangent. Word. Number two, Green Arrow. I just really enjoy how the new the, the show Arrow is wrote. Or written, whatever. Probably the wrong written vernacular. I really enjoy how it is writ and written. God damn it, I hate words. It's so good. It's it's just amazing. It it's a watered down version of Batman, but he's just doing his he's doing a fantastic job. Whoever thought of making that into a show, kudos to you. You did a fantastic job. Okay. Yeah. It that it's one of the best. It won like a great T great comic to television adaptation. One of the best. Uh, it was voted. I think it won an Academy Awards for this this year or something. Oscars. I don't know what it is. No, it wouldn't be Oscars. It was it Academy Awards. Emmys. Maybe, maybe Emmys for like the best choreo choreographed TV shows. Emmys, the TV thing. Emmys. Okay, it's an Emmys. Emmys. Yeah. It won like best choreographed show, best fight scenes, which is very well done. You can't yeah. argue that. No, it, it's done very, very well. There's very few scenes that you can pick apart and be like, oh, seriously? You expect me to believe that was a hit? And the number one, anyone who knows me knows this, is Batman. Batman, Batman has maximized 
the human potential and strength and intelligence. <laughs> Sorry, Bourbon. Batman. <laughs> and commitment and discipline, everything. That's he's maxed out your human capability. That the the max you can get out of a human. And because of that, he can stand toe to toe with anyone, any villain, any superhero. He's beat Superman more than Superman's beat him by a substantial number. If he can't beat you physically, he'll beat you mentally. Yeah. If he don't get you the first time, you sure as hell are going down and around. I'll say it for the podcast again. His superhero superpower is his mind. He can mentally adapt to any situation and figure out a way to win or adapt to it to survive. That's why no villain has beat him more than once. Unless they completely change their strategy. Okay? Bane is like nine foot seven, nine feet tall, seven inches. Short fucker. All the stuff, like the venom going, the titan going through his system, and Batman still beats him. How is that not amazing? Superman, he beats Superman like 12, like I think it's 16 out of 17 times that he beats Superman. You, you don't do that without being a superhero. Everyone's always like, he's not a real superhero. I can't see this. Yeah, okay, well then neither is Iron Man, but... Iron Man... If you got a lot of money, and you got a lot of time, never, you can have anything you want. I will never say at all that Superman or Iron Man is not a superhero. He has proven that he can go toe-to-toe with anyone. See, and I wouldn't say that about Batman, Nightwing, Green Arrow, anybody. Yeah. You know what? If you're wearing a costume, and you're doing a good deed, then you're a superhero, because you're doing Kick more than I feel like doing on a... Kick-ass hit girl. We all know how awesome they are. <laughs> so, yes. your list. My list, and this is kind of in a particular order, but not really. Deadpool, awesome stuff. Love the writing, love the character, love the breaking of the fourth wall, which is what makes it for me. The fact that he's looking at me going, hey, dumbass, are you reading this right now? The best. I love it. Captain America. Uh, little army passion there. That's what I did, but... I just always have loved the character, always thought a great stand-up guy, willing to stand up for the American right, even if that means going against the government, which he's done. Check it out. Iron Man. Love Tony Stark for the simple right, simple fact that he loves to look at the American government and go, you can't have the shit I have, I don't care. Great character, and they brought alcoholism into the comics and how to battle it, like, that was a very mature thing to do. Wolverine. How do you not like Wolverine? Three claws, each hand. I'm going to slice you, dice you, Julian, cut your ass to hell. Awesome character. Always with an attitude problem. And even though it would appear he doesn't give a shit about anyone, bring up Jean Grey or Jubilee and then see what happens in that argument because he's got a soft spot for his chicks. Batman, you can't deny the fact the guy is the apex of the human condition. He will... If he can't beat you this time, he'll beat you next time and every time thereafter. Green Arrow. Only because of this, and if you can't read it, Kevin Smith. His arc on Green Arrow was absolutely amazing. That's what made me fell in love, fall in love with the character and go find everything I could about him and read it up and find out who Spectre was and... Well, wait a minute. Spectre's Hal Jordan. I thought Hal Jordan was Green Lantern. Like, gave me a lot of back reading to do. Absolutely loved it. Rocket Raccoon. An astral raccoon with a machine gun. What's that to like? That's just fun. Your, the Apathy Coalition t-shirt should say everything you need to know about that. Ghost Rider because I like the redemption story. I like the fact that I'm a good guy. I want the best for this guy. I'm willing to commit myself to something that's not good to do that. And then digging yourself out of that hole. I really like that idea. The Authority. I can't pick a character, but it's all super awesome. Go find it. It's by Wildstorm. It's out of print. It's going to be... You're, you're hitting it in the backtrack issues. You're looking through boxes at your local comic store. Find everything you can find. Read the entire story arc. It's your favorite superheroes. If they were truly adults and had adult problems like, oh, I don't know, being gay or sleeping with somebody else's wife, good stuff. It really is. It, it complicates. And the honorable mention on that end is the establishment. I'm not helping you guys. Go track this down. This is just as good. Done by Wildstorm, too. And actually, it's kind of a spinoff of The Authority, but really good stuff. Loved it. The main villain in this 
is a guy who becomes cancer. Like, literally becomes cancer. Almost unstoppable. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. And the last and the least, Brian Polito, Mr. Jensen, and Mr. Hughes created a lovely character in the form of Lady Death that was a heroine cast to hell by her own abolition, but whatever. Great character, and I will wear the Chaos Crest on me for the rest of my life because I believed in the company that much. They're now defunct. Could have been a bad decision, but I stand by it. Those guys were brilliant. Her, Evil Ernie, Purgatory, Valkyrie, everything they wrote, was had written, was wonderful, and I loved it, and I was sad to see it go. I actually tried to bid on the rights to Evil Ernie from the patent office when that went up. Lost that bid, but whatever. Those are mine. A little bit passionate about that, if you can tell. <laughs> oh, and yeah, we talked about the Azrael thing. This is the only issue of that storyline I ever read. So that any plot as we are. Like it. Like it a lot. That's the only one I ever read because the comic was like, why is Batman kicking the shit out of Batman? Confused me. I had to know. As real. Little, little tidbit. As real takes over the bat suit while Batman gets is recovering from his back breaking from Bane. Thank you. Nightfall. My favorite comic book. That and The Long Halloween are my two favorite. No, that's your favorite storyline from the comic book. Yeah. Well, that's not your favorite comic book. Because this actually took I mean, part over like, story. I'm sorry. Legend of the Dark Knight, and then there were oh, uh, that's Batman, nice, the greatest detective. No. This is the comic book it's in. Batman, Legend of the Dark Knight. Night's it's, End. It's part of Night's End. That's what I was saying. The storyline. Yes. That's the storyline. It took place over like six books. Yeah, I know. I know. I have, I have the first one. There's three books. Night's End, Nightfall, Night's Watch, and then Night's End was the last book. I got, like, the graphic novel. It's that thick. No, that's the storyline. What you're not understanding is when it comes to Batman, it's just like X-Men comics. This is Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. Then there's a comic book just called Batman. Then there's Batman Detective Stories. Okay, I'm agreeing with you in a roundabout way, but I'm saying that is part of Night's End. Yeah, which is a great storyline. Yeah, it's part of Nightfall. Yeah, yeah, it plays off of Nightfall, which is... I know what I'm saying. Do you know what you're saying? Because I know what I'm saying. I'm agreeing with you. (laughs) Don't agree with me in a small tone of voice. <laughs> this is like yelling at Matt Redding. Yeah. Why? Well, no, because he'll agree with you, but he'll agree with you loudly, and then you feel like you're in an argument even though you're not. You, you thought I was saying something else, and I wasn't saying it. That's all I was saying. Well, you were, you were misspeaking then. <laughs> well, you were mishearing. <laughs> I'm going to mishear your face for a beer can. Okay, we are not doing this next week. We're taking a hiatus for our holiday um, do yourself a favor. Watch all this. Read all like that. It. Well, don't. No, read yeah. all that. Okay, read it, well, you won't get that. it all done for the next time, but. You could. If, you, not if you had a hyper chamber, you could really get all this done. See, this is why we need this. Go find a hyper chamber. This is something. Why are we not funding this? <laughs> <laughs> we all need a hyper chamber. If I had a hyper chamber, I would we, be the we, next Batman. I don't know. We seriously need to create a quantum quantum entanglement in phase in space to where seventy years could be one minute. Seriously, I just wouldn't want to age. That's my I want the hyper chamber. If I did one thing I can get in my life, I would ask for nothing else. Is the hyper chamber right, Jess? Just right. agree. Yeah. See, she knows. Is my baby happy now? <laughs> you can put the baby in a hyper chamber, and in three days, it'd be like five years old. It'd be great. Oh, you're missing all the best stuff, I'm then. Missing, dude. I'm missing. Yeah, all the best stuff. But uh, like I said, we're taking a hiatus for the holidays. Thanks for watching. We do appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Fuck your happy holidays. Take your Festivus and shove it up your ass. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Good Kwanzaa. Boom. See, I have a habit of saying that just because you never know. A lot of... He's a bartender. Yeah, Jew, a lot of Jewish people. Happy Hanukkah. I, I say happy. I say happy holidays. It covers it all. If I say Merry Christmas, then I have the awkward. I'm Jewish or I'm atheist. I'm oh, happy well then. Christmas. By the way, Happy Hanukkah. Oh, I do. Oh, say I'm that. atheist. I, I do say that. Oh, well then, go fuck yourself. Oh well. I don't hate atheists. Happy next really, Thursday. <laughs> what do you got if not Happy Thursday? <laughs> you don't have to celebrate Christmas. You don't have to really commit to being a Christian to celebrate Christmas. Most of the people that are Christians celebrate Christmas don't deserve the right to celebrate it in the first yeah. place. So if you're an atheist. 
Have a good time. Put up a tree. Put up some lights. It can mean whatever it means to you. It's been proven that based on the star alignment in, in that the, the Bible describes that Jesus was actually born in the middle of July. No, so, no, actually it's closer to day four. He's born in the spring because no. otherwise would shepherds be tending their flock in the middle of winter? Nobody does that. No. Nobody does that. And especially in that area of the world. All right. That's another nerd conversation. We'll talk about this after Christmas is not to infuriate your Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Hanukkah. Enjoy your Kwanzaa. Happy Nerd. Happy Nerd Christmas. Merry. Happy Nerd Christmas. Merry Nerd Christmas.